Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, we got to talk about how I did it again. Yes, that is right. I did it again. I traded away my Avengers 1 just when I picked up the new CGC 3.5 of my Avengers 1 at San Diego Comic-Con, just when I got that book back in the collection, back on the wall, the grail behind me, I decided to be a shrewd general manager and trade it away. Trade it away once again for this big book right here. So in this video, we're gonna do the unboxing. I'll show you guys what I picked up. And then I wanna talk about this idea later on in the video, you know, this idea of trading up and averaging up or averaging down, so to speak, and finding breaking points at values and grades. But before I get into the video, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, help support the channel, doing those things, I appreciate it. But let's get into this video here today because we gotta undo the box right here. We gotta undo the box, break the box, open up the box, right? Open up the box. Uh, we got to do this unboxing. We got to do the fun stuff first before we do the data stuff. And you know, this one is very, very exciting. I was able to pick this one up from Marvel Comics, otherwise known as Jordy. Uh, you know, he's one of the great dealers, a part of the Grails network of dealers. Shout out to him. Uh, he has an amazing collection, huge books. Like, I mean, you want to feel bad about your collection, just go over to his Instagram and just see all of the books that he has in his collection. And uh, you'll very quickly realize like how, uh, how worthless all of your books are because uh, some of the stuff that he has is absolutely incredible. And uh, I was over on one of his claim sales uh, and he had a bunch of books on the wall and including this book right here. And I had made mention to him that, hey, I w would you be open to doing a trade for that particular book? I have an Avengers 3.5 and I could send you that and then I could pay you the difference. Uh, would you be open to that? And he definitely was and was open to it, which is always very much appreciated. And without further ado, I traded away my Avengers 1 in a 3.5 grade for this book right here. Another Avengers one, but this time in a 4.5 grade with off-white pages. This beautiful copy of Avengers number one right here. I never get tired of looking at this book. I mean, I love this book. I know there are some people out there that don't feel like this book right here is a, you know, a real mega key. But the theory for me remains, man. The theory for me remains that this name right here, Avengers, right in the top, the brand name of Avengers is right up there with the likes of Spider-Man, Superman, and Batman. Even though there's no first appearances of characters in this book, I still feel like this is probably one of the most undervalued Marvel blue chip books out there in the market. I have the theory that in 10 years time, I think that this book will finally start to catch up with some of those other S tier books out there in the comic book market. I just gotta take a little bit of time here to appreciate this thing. Uh, yeah, shout out to Marvel Comics. Uh, I'll put a link in his in the description. You guys should definitely go check him out if you guys are looking to make some trades or pick up some major grails for yourself. He is a great dealer uh, to have on your Instagram. And yeah, this thing is great. I mean, absolutely amazing colors with this one right here. Uh, you know, so, some of the you know Avengers keys. You know, anytime you have that sort of red orange cup cover, uh, there's a lot of variance in how you know saturated it can look. And the colors on this one are absolutely amazing. Uh, perfect you know, a type of damage, you know, it has the, the Marvel chipping, which doesn't personally bother me. Uh, a little bit of writing over top of Incredible Hulk right there, but you know, it's in the negative space, which is not too big a deal overall. So uh, I am super happy to once again, upgrade my CGC 3.5. And now I'm in the 4.5 category. I am now on the top 39% of graded Avengers comic books out there in the market. Now I've made mention of this before that my current goal is to get to a 7.0. I don't know when I want to do that, but you know, for me, I would love to be in the top 10% of graded Avengers comic books. But what's crazy to me is to think about how already at being a 4.5, I'm in the top 39%. So I kind of wanted to show you guys some interesting things, kind of dig into the data with this book and talk a little bit about this idea of averaging up and where the breaking points are of values. Because I've kind of gone on this weird journey where I picked up, you know, I started with a 2.5 and then I traded that into the 3.5 and then I traded this into the 4.5. And, you know, financially, it's probably not been the best way for me to acquire this particular grade. Like if I were around the clock all the way back to before I bought my 2.5, if I've just taken all of the money that I've put into this book 
and bought whatever book then, I could probably have a higher grade. At least that was the case until I got to where I am today. So in this video, I kind of want to show you guys these breaking points and talk about why I think it's really, really a, a valuable tool to be able to trade up and find these, you know, situations where actually, even though you're overspending at certain times, at certain grades, eventually you'll catch up with those numbers. So let's kind of look, take a look at this here and I'll, I'll kind of show you guys what I'm talking about more specifically. Of course, you know, the Avengers one, uh, absolutely love this book. First appearance of the Avengers, origin of the Avengers. Avengers, and I have it already pulled up here, the 4.5 grade. I'll show you guys. This is the top 39% of graded comic books already at the 4.5 grade. I mean, that alone is pretty crazy to me. I, just to put it into a comparison, if I go over to Daredevil number one and I sort by uh, CGC 4.5s, I'll show you, if you have a 4.5 of Daredevil number one, you're in the top 51%, uh, effectively uh, 52%, just to kind of put it into sort of perspective. And that kind of just goes to show that getting high grades of Avengers number one is actually very, very difficult. There's a lot of chances for color breaks along Loki right here because of the dark green, uh, the orange cover can get faded very easily. Marvel chipping is always a factor. So, you know, unlike some other books that have say white covers, Avengers number one is very hard, difficult to find in the uh, top end of stuff, which is why at the 4.5 grade, you're already in the, you know, top 39%. But let's kind of dig into some numbers with the Avengers one here. And I kind of want to take you guys through the journey that I've had with this book. And to give you guys a little bit of perspective of what I'm talking about, hopefully it doesn't come off too dense or, you know, uh, too convoluted. But I kind of just wanted to show you guys the kind of numerical journey I've had. And as I've traded up each time, even though I'm putting more money in, I'm actually shrinking down the overpay value that I've put into certain books by having to trade up into them. So let me kind of show you guys again what, what I'm talking about. So I started down here at the 2.5 grade. I got that book about, you know, a year and a half ago. And at the time, you know, certainly the prices have had pretty massive corrections, uh, but let's just focus on kind of what I paid for it. At the time in which I picked it up, I paid $3,200, roughly $3,200. Uh, so I was already into this book for $3,200 at the 2.5 grade. I had it for some time and then I decided to kind of trade up into the 3.5 range at San Diego Comic-Con. I had the video about that. And when I traded up into the 3.5 range, I kind of broke it all down. I mentioned to you guys, I ended up paying $1,800 to get my hands on that book. Let's call the value of this book, you know, say right now around the $4,000 range, right? So you're kind of looking at that and you're thinking, okay, Swaggle Hoss, you paid $3,200 and then you gave $1,800 cash to trade up to a 3.5. So at that point, you're basically $5,000 into a book that currently currently is only valued at $4,000. So effectively, I've sort of overpaid by 20% by having to do this sort of trade into books and doing it this way. Now, luckily that isn't too much of a problem because in other books that I've been able to kind of trade and buy and sell, I have a ton of equity in my collection and the books that I really want, you know, the one I love, which is the Avengers book, you know, it's okay that I've had to overpay to get the book that I want. But one of the things I wanted to do was to kind of condense that 20% overpayment I've had at that book. And what's interesting is that as you start to go up, you know, the grades in which you pay for this book and you start to shrink that gap, you'll actually start to see that the value of it exponentially grows because the grades become higher and higher and higher to get or harder to get, excuse me. And therefore the prices get higher and higher. So I was really attracted to this idea of once again, trading up into this 4.5 grade, because you know, if we take a look at it again, just to reiterate, I'm $4,000 uh, or excuse me, I'm $5,000 into this book that is effectively worth $4,000. So I have 20% overpaid. And then lo and behold, I get to this 4.5, which we can kind of see, you know, last sale is 5,400, uh, maybe 30 day moving or whatever is around this 5,300 range. We can kind of put it around that price point. And I see this book up for sale and I'm able to end up giving Jordy about 1,475, which puts me into the book now for 6,400. So now all of a sudden I'm $6,400 into a book that is worth $5,300. But one of the things that's exciting about that is that when you do the math, now I'm actually only 18% overpaid into my comic book right here, which is pretty cool overall. I'm actually shrinking down the overpay margin, even though I'm trading up and having to pay, you know, an excess of 10% on these deals. Cause that's what dealers usually do, right? Is when you do, you know, partial trades or whatever, they like to do 10% over the value of the actual book. And one of the things that's really cool about that and why I felt like this was a good, good deal to trade into this 4.5 is that when you start to look at the grades above this, specifically at the 5.0 range, the 5.5 5 range and all that stuff at the $6,400 price point, 
I actually still would not be able to afford a 5.0 for what they're selling for right now. Now, of course, the market could definitely correct and things could go back down. But one of the things that's really cool about this is that even though I'm currently 18% overvalued on my 4.5 in terms of the money that I've put into this, uh, that same money, the $6,400, wouldn't have easily been able to yield me a higher grade than where I currently stand. Where if we look at the 5.0 range, I'll show you guys right here, the last sale was in June at the $6,600 price point. And the point that I'm making here is that even though I've had to overspend on the grades that I've had in my hand, uh, based on the money I've spent, I still wouldn't have been able to get this 5.0 or 5.5 or you know 6.0 because what happens is the value of this book gets exponentially, exponentially more expensive as you continue to go up. So if I were to rewind the clock all the way back to when I first bought the Avengers and I told myself, hey, you were gonna spend $6,400, you might as well get the highest grade version of this book that you could today. Well, one, it would definitely be probably even less than a 4.5 because I would have bought it at, you know, April of 2021. But let's just say that, you know, all things were equal. I still would not have been able to buy a 5.0. I still would effectively be at the grade that I'm at with this 4.5 grade right here. So that is something that I think is really interesting and cool about this idea of kind of averaging up or averaging down into certain books that you want or trading into certain books that you want, where if you can identify, you know, the end game goal for what grade you actually want to go to, and you can really dig into those numbers, you'll see that there are these checkpoints that sort of allow you to kind of recoup the money that you've overspent in getting in the club. And this is not to mention the fact that, you know, I've got to enjoy having this book in my collection for all of this time. So, you know, if I had to wait to today to finally make that purchase, uh, I wouldn't have been able to enjoy the book for all the time that I had it. So that is something that I think is really interesting about this. I'm super happy that I was able to trade for this book once again. It's a beautiful copy. I mean, I would definitely even be happy just holding on to this one if I'm not really able to trade again to get up to that 7.0 range, although that will eventually be the goal. But it is a very interesting technique and something I think that can be applied to you guys when you're out there uh, uh, trying to pick up your grails. Anyways, that's all I have for this video. Shout out to Jordy from Marvel Comics. Thank you so much for hooking me up with this book. Really, really appreciate it. Let me know what you guys think. Gonna go enjoy the new grail, put it up on the wall. Anyways, that's all I have for this video. Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I'll see you in the next one.